I am in the lab working on the Mission 529 power supply and today we're doing some compatibility testing principally with the Eventide H9 and I thought you might be interested in taking a look at what we're doing. The first thing we want to do is we want to set up the H9 so that we can do some measurements on it and make sure that it looks like it's going to be compatible before we connect it up to the 529 and do some more testing. So I thought I'd show you that and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, ready? Let's go. Okay, here's what we have on the bench. I have the Eventide H9 here, and uh, these guys are for later testing. I don't have these connected up just now. Underneath the pedal train Nano here, I have a 529 power supply and a lithium ion battery, and we're gonna take a look at that here in a minute. But first, we're gonna test the H9 and make sure that we think it's gonna be compatible. So I have a um, power cable going into the back of the H9 here and it is connected up right now through um, this connector assembly here which goes up to uh, the bench power supply. I'll show you that in a minute. That's so that we can generate um, a controlled voltage going into the H9. I've also got um, a multimeter set um, in series with that so that we can measure what the current draw is very accurately into the H9 over a period of time. So we can tell what it's like when it's starting up, we can tell what it's like during normal operation, we can tell what it's like when it's Bluetooth wireless is operational and uh, make sure that we're gonna be able to provide enough current from the 529 to drive the H9 in normal operation. Other than that, I have um, a test signal um, will be coming out of the um, signal generator here going into the input, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and then coming on the output side, we have um, the oscilloscope, so we can measure that, and we can make sure that our test signal is passing through the H9 correctly, and there's no unexpected noise or glitches or anything going on on the audio side. Okay, this is the bench power supply, so we're gonna uh, configure this to provide a nine volt supply. Um, the H9 will run from a nine volt supply, and that's what we're able to, uh, to put out of the H9 out of the 529 rather. So we're gonna do that from here. Um, this over here is the signal generator. This is gonna give us a test signal to run in through the audio path. This is the digital multimeter. This is gonna show us exactly how much current is being drawn by the H9 when we're running the various tests. And then over here is the oscilloscope and this is gonna show us what's passing uh, through coming on the output of the audio so that we can make sure there's no noise or other issues. Okay, let's give it a go. I have the power supply set to nine volts and we've limited it right now at 500 milliamps, which is what the output is from the 529. So that's the maximum that we can deliver from the 529, at least that's what it's rated at. So I've limited the power supply of 500 milliamps. It's set at nine volts. I have um, that set up to a, um, to a power jack on the back of the H9. So now we're gonna press the on button. And then this is showing us here what the consumption is. So we can see it hit around 390 milliamps or so when it booted up. But now it's operational and at idle it's around about 280 milliamps or so. So I think we're pretty comfortable with that. Let's turn on the signal generator. Thank you. All right, so I'm sending um, a one kilohertz signal to the scope. Let's, uh, let's crank it up just a little bit so we can see it a little better. And right now we're running a spring reverb and you can see that in the oscilloscope. So that's the kind of the shape of the one kilohertz tone being adjusted by the spring reverb and we're pulling about 285 milliamps right now, which is comfortably within what we need um, to supply or what we are able to supply from the 529, um, which is rated around 500 milliamps. 
So that's looking good. Let's turn it off. It drops a little bit, um, not a great deal when it's uh, in non uh, when it's bypassed. Turn it back on again. A little extra when it's on from um, mainly from the LED, I imagine. Okay. Let's try uh, changing some different uh, presets. So I'm selecting presets on the H9 and switch between a few different ones. And we can see on the oscilloscope there we're changing uh, we're changing pattern as I move to uh, to different presets. Okay, all those look pretty good. So I'm going to hit bypass now, and we're going to check the bypass signal on the scope. And just to make sure that it's stable and we're not seeing any unexpected noise, it looks pretty good. Again, we're at around 280 milliamps still in bypass mode, and that looks very clean. That's a very clean signal bypassed, so we're not really generating any noise. I would not expect to as we're using the bench power supply, which is a, a extremely stable and, uh, and very low noise power supply, DC power supply here, so I wouldn't expect us to, to see anything from that. What we're going to do is compare that to the 529 and make sure that we're running off, when we're running off the 529, our signal is as clean from that as it is from this uh, expensive bench power supply. All right, let's turn it back on. Let's find something that's a little more stable to read from. So that's a spring reverb. So this is with the effect on, and again, you can see that the signal is very stable. There's no noise there at all, so I think I'm happy with that. So that's a good baseline. We're going to compare that to the 529. Now, thus far, we've seen on boot up around 380 milliamps was the maximum, so that's plenty within spec. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up my, uh, my cell phone here, and I'm going to connect, uh, connect the Bluetooth wireless as that should, uh, that should pull a little bit more current when we're talking over the wireless network. So right now I'm going to connect my cell phone here to the, to the H9, which we're doing now. And we see it go up a little bit while it's connecting. And we can see here now, see my phone here. So now we're driving the H9 over the Bluetooth wireless, and we can change between different, so we should see the oscilloscope change here now while I change to different patches. And we can see that when it's switching between different presets, we climb up a little bit to 290, 300 milliamps maybe. Let's change between a couple of different algorithms. Still pretty comfortably under 300 milliamps, so we have plenty of room there, I would say. So that looks good. I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn it off now, and we'll watch the um, we'll watch the display here, and we'll see if we get any surges when we turn it off. That looks pretty good. I didn't see anything too worrying there. And back on again. And there we see we hit 388 or so there at a stage when it's booting up, when it's doing some reading or writing from the flash, um, running the processor a little faster maybe for boot up. Now we'll do some other things on the H9. Let me try turning the hot knob on, and then I'm going to turn that. That's going to light up a few more LEDs, so we should see it go up a little bit then. There we go, as we get up to, uh, as we light all the LEDs on the hot knob display. But it's still pretty low. Let's do some tap tempo. Uh, not used on that preset. Change presets. There we go. Tap tempo. Again, goes up a little bit while it's processing the tap, but 
really that's comfortably under 300 milliamps mostly while it's running and below 400 milliamps of boot up so we're going to have plenty of room there at 500 milliamp supply on the 529. Okay here's the underside of, um, of this pedal train nano that I have here so here is the here's the 529 and we've received quite a lot of questions about um, where does the 529 fit and about its profile so you can see here that it fits comfortably um, underneath the, the pedal train. And uh, I'll flip it up in a minute so that you can get a better look at that. This is a um, 22, 2200, 22,000 uh, milliamp hour lithium ion battery. This is also super low profile. So we're going to connect this up to here across the USB connection. And that will allow us to power the pedal board from the 529. I have a 500 milliamp hour output here, or 500 milliamp output, the high performance digital output that's connected here to the H9 through a polarity reversal cable because the H9 is center pin positive and we'll be providing a cable with the, H, with the 529 that's specifically designed to work with the H9. I also have a couple of MXR panels connected up here to the lower output power supplies just to make sure that that works okay when we're switching them on and off and we don't have any issues there. Okay let's flip it up so you can see how this goes together. You can see here we don't have to do anything funky with the pedal train this is as is with the standard feet and you've got plenty of clearance under there. I just have uh, velcro on the underside there to hold it in place and the same with the battery here. So let's flip it up and you can see that it fits perfectly with the power supply just there on the underside. Okay, let's connect up a USB cable and uh, we're going to see if we can power it up. Okay, I've connected up a USB cable between the lithium ion battery pack and the 529 and there's a little switch on the underside of the battery. So we can press that and check that everything comes up. So there's the even tide. So that appears to be working fine. That's booted up without any problems, running uh, just off the battery. So I don't have any, uh, no cables. There we go. So this is running completely off that lithium ion battery pack via the Mission 529. Okay, let's um, let's try the uh, let's try the other pedals here. Make sure that they power on. Yep. Yep. That's good. Okay, now let's connect up some audio and we'll check to make sure that we've got a good audio path. Okay, so this setup is much the same as we had before, except I'm not bothering to, uh, to measure the current now because we know what this guy is, uh, is taking. So now I just have an audio path. It's going into the, um, into the Dynacomp here, going through the distortion, going into the H9 and then out. And then I have the scope connected to the output of the eventide and the signal generator um, is connected right the way through the signal chain. So let's measure that and we'll see how it looks. Okay so I have my test signal running through the signal chain but I have everything bypassed right now so this is just the bypass signal with all of the effects turned off and running off the, the lithium ion battery and the 529 and as we can see here we have a nice clean sine wave there everything looks pretty much exactly the same as it looked when we were running off the bench power supply. So now we're just running off our little battery inside the, the Nano and everything looks very clean. So I think I'm happy with that. So let's, uh, let's turn it on. I have my uh, iPhone here and I'm uh, connected up through the, um, through the Bluetooth interface. So let's turn the effect on. So now we can see on the scope the effect is running okay. And again it looks pretty clean. Try the tap tempo. There, there you can see we're changing the tap. Let's change the intensity of the, uh, of the effect or the mix here. If I can do that in front of the camera. There we go. Turn it off again. That looks good. Let's try some different uh, try some different ones. 
try saving a preset. See if that gives us any problems. No, that all looks pretty good. Let's try a different preset. Let's try a different effect. Let's go to the chorus. So there's our chorus effect. Again, everything looks pretty good. Pulsating chorus. That looks fine. So we're still running uh, quite comfortably off that little battery. 70s guitar. Nice. Right, that looks good. Let's try some of the other effects now. So I'm just going to reach over now and uh, we're going to turn the compressor on. Now you can see the, uh, the signal significantly compressed now. You can turn the output up just a little. Um, so that's what's happening when we uh, put that through the compressor as well as having the, um, the reverb on there. So that's working okay. We'll turn the reverb off. So now it's just going through the compressor. Adjusting some of those a little bit. Yep, that's all working as expected. Turn the compressor back off. It's back to our bypass clean signal. I have a distortion box here as well. Let's try that. There we go. Nice clean sawtooth wave. That's as clean a distortion as you'll ever see. Try compressing it. Well, it's probably not going to compress actually because it's already compressed by the distortion. So there's an interesting uh, effect that if you have um, if you have a lot of distortion on the on the signal, that's going to compress it so much that the compressor actually doesn't have any effect at all because it's already compressed. You can see there's almost nothing there. Turning it on and off. Whereas if we turn the distortion off and then turn the compressor on. can see the effect that it has so that's again what we would expect so that all looks good and the signal is super clean let's turn um, turn the reverb back on again and that all looks pretty good so I would say I am pretty happy that you can run an even tied H9 with the mission 529 power supply from a lithium-ion battery